think the last phrase, if I have my notes correct, I just draw the lines, sometimes I can draw the wrong place. I think I said, we give of ourselves, we give to others, we give to God, and we worship Him. Okay, perfect. So let's go ahead, uh, someone, if you would, would you read Psalms 149, verse 1 through 3, verse number 5, and we'll fill in the blanks as we continue on tonight. Praise you, the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song, his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in, in, in the dance. Let them, pray, let, let them send praises unto him with the temple and the heart. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll give you those words real quick. Thank you, Brother Craig. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Sing. Sing unto the Lord a new song. And praise Him in the congregation of the saints. Let Israel rejoice. Rejoice. In Him that made Him. Let the children of, of, of Zion be joyful, be joyful in their King. Let them praise His name in the dance. Dance. Let them sing praises. Sing praises. Unto Him with the uh, temporal and heart. Verse number five. Let the saints be joyful. Be joyful. In glory, let them sing out upon their beds. Amen. You know, when you read this, when you get the connotation of that, doesn't it make you think about being happy? How many of you feel better when you're happy and everybody around you is happy? Yeah, it's a good place to be. And when we're praising God, I don't think there's any place that anybody would be but be happy. Amen. What's that old... Uh, Somewhere I don't know if it's country or rock or don't worry, be happy. Amen. Well, just being able to be in the presence of the Lord, they just stole the theory from God's word. Amen. But being happy. Being happy. The next one, I'm going to give you these. Well, actually, I'll let someone read it. Uh, the words are very similar in all these uh, blanks. Someone want to read Psalms 150, verse 6? I'm sorry, verse 1. Down to verse number 6. Praise you, Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with the string instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high sounding. Praise Him upon the. <laughs> Everything runs. Sorry, I'm getting it. Praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. So the first blank is praise. Praise ye the Lord. The second blank is praise God in the sanctuary. And then those four blanks all the way down, two, three, four, five, they each have praise Him in them. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. And then it concludes with praise ye the Lord. Okay, let's just stop here for a few moments. Let's take a little bit of a look at this. This is in your notes. This is something that I'm kind of adding in as we look at this. But this is the conclusion of Psalms. Psalms are songs. They are written as Brother Eli to sing praises to God. And uh, the Word of God closes by saying, Praise the Lord. Praise Him in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Basically, and what, what, what the psalmist is saying is, Praise God all over the world. Amen. And when you're in His house, 
when you're outside, no matter where you are, praise God. Whether you're in America, whether you're on foreign soil, whether you're uh, enjoying the great things of life or maybe having to uh, uh, endure some things you'd rather not, praise ye the Lord. Praise will change things, won't it? And uh, I love where the Word of God says, praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him for His excellent greatness. Has God done anything mighty for you? Amen. All right, what should we do for that? We should praise Him. Now, does He have excellent greatness? What should we do? Praise Him. Praise him. Amen. So uh, here it is that, that He's the ever-existing One. Uh, uh, he is He is the Creator. He is the Redeemer. He's the Lamb of God. He's the Son of God. Amen. Uh, throughout the whole Word of God, you know, we are encouraged to worship and praise God. We come into the book of Revelation that tells us of the end time and end time events and what we will be doing in heaven. And what are we going to be doing in heaven? Praising God. So our life should all be uh, a manifestation of praises to God for who He is, His character, and you can think of all the things that He is to you. He's a friend. He's a, he's a redeemer. He's a provider. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. He's an encourager. Whatever you need Him to be, He is. And so we need to praise Him for that all over the world. Amen. Not just on Sunday in church or during delegated times of church, but praising God. Amen. I love uh, uh, when I meet people. Do you ever meet someone? And I like I've met a few people, and, and uh, uh, sometimes it's it's uh, uh, the African American population. I'll say, "Well, hi. How are you? I'm blessed." You know what they're doing? They're praising God. Amen, because of the status of where they are. They don't even have to go much farther to let me know, Brother Eli, that they know Christ as the risen Savior and the Redeemer. Amen. We should praise God. It should be very natural to us. I like how it goes on down and it talks about praising Him on the psaltery, praising Him on the harp, praising Him on the low cymbal, the high cymbals, uh, praising Him on all these stringed instruments and in the dance. Now let me ask you something. Now I know I can ask Sister Beth, and she can do it, and I can ask Sister Holly, and she can do it. But if I ask you to come up to the piano and play, what would you have to do? Could you spontaneously come up and play? But I, I, I imagine if I give you a couple months, six months, maybe even a year, you should, uh, if I say I'm going to call on you, Sister T, and next April I'm going to call on you to play something on the piano. I promise you, Sister Tina, if you practice every day, you would amaze us when you got up here next April. Oh, I promise you I will. <laughs> <laughs> You're running my point. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is this, is when we look at all these instruments, and, you know, I, I look low, high symbol, and we think, what, what's the definition of some of these you know, we can look in detail with that, but I think one thing that we can, as we look at all of it together, if we see all those instruments coming together, we would say, well, they're an orchestra. And orchestras would be like Sister Tina next year in April. They practice. The reason why Sister Beth can play the piano is because she spent years before practicing, days and hours and weeks. She practiced. And so it, 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 it may be spontaneous to us, but it wouldn't be spontaneous if you ask her. She said, no, I practiced that. I worked on that. And so what I'm saying is you don't go to an orchestra to see an orchestra just spontaneously play. It would be chaos if you did. There would be no harmony. There would be no rhythm. There would be no coming together. But because they practiced and they were ready, there they are to be able to perform. Most people think that praise is spontaneous. And yes, there is part of praise that is spontaneous, but the praise is also orchestrated. We come to church knowing we're going to praise God. We get up in the morning knowing that we're going to praise God. We come because we want to come before His presence with worship and praise. It should be orchestrated. Amen. It should be designed and we 
should be get prepared and we should be ready for. And so I think as the writer tells us, uh, as we think of, of, of God and who He is, praising Him in His permanent, praising Him in His, uh, in His sanctuary, praising Him for His mighty acts, praising Him according to His greatness, amen, we should have it orchestrated. Meditate upon who God is. Research the Word of God for who God is. Be ready when you go to work to do your work as worship to God. Be ready when you come to church to worship God. Be ready when you get up in the morning to worship God. Be ready when you go to bed at the end of the night to lay your head down and to be able to worship God in your thoughts and in your prayers to God. It should be orchestrated. Praise shouldn't just be spontaneous. Although I think there's part of the praise that is spontaneous because our emotion gets involved. But your emotions aren't always going to feel like praising God. You're going to sometimes be tired. And you're sometimes going to have things that you don't understand. And you're going to have sometimes things that can be distractions. And so that's why it's important that you orchestrate praise in your life. And that's what the psalmist says. He talks all about our Redeemer throughout the whole book of Psalms and the importance of worshiping God and the greatness of God. But he closes by telling us, that our praise should be orchestrated. Amen. Praise God. And he said, let everything that hath breath give him praise. Amen. We find that praise is in songs, it's in tears, it's it, 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 it's 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 in everything about our life. Amen. Should be praised to God. Don't you love? If you ever study music and you look at music, you see you can see how it kind of can build up a crescendo. It really is. When you look at music, it really is life. Why is music such a huge part of of society? I mean, you don't even have to be a Christian to enjoy music. I mean, you know, people in general enjoy music because we were designed, and it really can. It can crescendo and show our life and the lows and the highs. But the devil, he took what God meant for worship to him and distracted it and all kinds of other things. But God still wants singing for his glory. Let's read. Singing, singing is an act of worship. Singing is an act of worship. Our Creator created us to sing. There are over 150 references to singing in the Bible. The word song is referred to over 65 times, and this does not include the times it is mentioned before uh, chapters and psalms, uh, like psalms of uh, psalms of degree. Singing is important to God. Singing is important to God. He loves to hear us. He loves to hear us. He loves to hear His Word sung. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Is what Ephesians 5 19 says. Song singing is the words there. Singing teaches us, it encourages us. Singing teaches us, it encourages us, and it admonishes us as we sing to the Lord. Let's just stop here for a moment. You know, I you know I, I, I don't I'm not gonna lose out if someone doesn't have songbooks in their church. I like songbooks. I think they're important. You know, they put them up on the screen for you to see them. You know, what whatever whatever works best for someone to see the words. However, I do think it's important to see the words. I think that's what's important. Because we need to know what we were saying. Uh, sometimes we can think that it's one thing, it might be another. However, I think that the important thing is to know what we're singing because most often 
we're singing doctrine. That's why some folks say to me, well, I don't like those old hymns. I, like, I, I don't like churches where they sing the old, the old hymns. Well, I'm fearful that we're losing something when we get away from those hymns. And I'm not saying some new songs can't have doctrine in them. But a lot do not. A lot are appealing to the emotions or to the flesh. And when we sing these songs, particularly some of these old hymns, and Brother uh, uh, uh. Craig, you've shared some with these hymns and their backgrounds. But they were men and women who wrote them because they were given us doctrine and theology, and we learned from it. We learned from the teaching of God's Word, but the alignment of the Word that lines up with the songs. I like our hymns of glorious uh, praise, but I also like our new hymn, too. In fact, I'll, oftentimes, as we're singing songs from there, I'll look up and I'll, ref I'll reference the scripture that is given to that song. Y'all do that? You know, look at the scripture that's given about that song and that, that new hymnal. I like that. And so when we're singing, we are learning the doctrine. Uh, think about the old rugged cross and the doctrine that is there. Think about amazing grace and the doctrine that is there. He set me free. I'll fly away. What a day that will be. The doctrine that is provided in that song is phenomenal. It teaches us about the heaven. Uh, we, you know, there are so many songs that, that we can think of that there's doctrine behind that. Amen. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Um, uh, uh, just all the different songs. Anybody have a song that the doctrine speaks to them that you think of when you think about songs and doctrine? How great thou art. Go ahead, we'll be right over to you. What's that? How great thou art. Amen. Anything you want to elaborate on it? I just love how it tells us how great God is. Amen. And it really, I think, when we sing that song, there is like you want to belt it out from the inner part of you. It's almost like you're saying, my soul is singing this song as you sing the greatness of God. Brother Eli, what were you going to say? Are you watching the blood? Are you watching the blood? What speaks to you? Uh, as we said, the of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because if there was no shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Uh, and we have to have the blood of Jesus Christ. And you know, a lot of folks, that's offensive to people today. They don't like that. They take the blood out of Psalms. You take the blood out, you're taking the doctrine of salvation, of sanctification of They have the Bible, too. That's right, brother. Someone else, you have something you'd like to share. Any songs that speak to you with doctrine? Amen. It really makes you think. You know, if the oceans was ink and the sky was that paper that you could write of all of God, you wouldn't exhaust it. I mean, that's crazy to think about. Someone else? Amen. Tell me a little bit about that. Just the way it talks about how that close relationship that we have with him and how that it wasn't always so. There was a time before Christ when my life was empty. But once we're truly born again, we knew that he moves inside. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. How that if your life is under tender, you manage that because he abides with him. Amen. That's right. Very good. Someone else. That's good. I like your input on that. All right. So it teaches, it teaches, it encourages us and admonishes uh, us as we sing to the Lord. So I'm going to read Colossians 3.16. Sister Rachel, that where, where it says, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. It is the abiding of God that we have that. 
And it, it, it is that the Word of God is dwelling richly in us, and we're teaching and we're admonishing even in songs. I love my, my, my wife, uh, her Sunday school curriculum that she chose to, to work with uh, her children. Um, one of the things in this curriculum is that it is a verse, and they sing it to the tune of a children's maybe well-known nursery rhyme or something. And there's nothing wrong with nursery rhymes, but they certainly don't do for us what God's Word does. And so you take that scripture and you redo it and that, that, that little uh, melody that maybe they already know or have heard and they're, they're, they don't realize as they singing, they're singing, they're also memorizing the Word of God. And so it's good for us to allow the Word of God to dwell in us richly. And God likes to hear us singing His Word. Why do we begin? Why do we begin church services with singing? I love this. Brother Hill did a great job on this. Amen. Someone read Psalms 100, verse number 2. Come before His presence with singing. So isn't that amazing how that we uh, kind of uh, set up our service, have song service, then prayer, then the Word, uh, the, the, the word of God. Uh, as we do that, we're coming before His presence with singing. It's a good way to do it. I love when God comes down in song service. It really sets the platform for me to be able to preach. And I, and I love that. We have great song leaders here. Uh, they, they, they get the Word of God out there. They get us worshiping. And they get us to a place where the presentation of the Word of God, it just, it's perfect. And so we come before His presence with singing. So I want to read Nehemiah 12, 27. And the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought the Levites out of all their places to bring them to Jerusalem. To keep the dedication with gladness, both with thanksgiving and with singing, with cymbals, psalteries, and with harps. Amen. So the word is singing. Amen. Here uh, at the dedication, uh, they, 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 they started up with singing. So singing, God loves to hear our singing. How many of you know the word spiritual warfare? Sometimes we feel it, uh, other times we just know it, uh, but, but for any believer, we know that we are in spiritual warfare. Do you know singing helps us in our spiritual warfare? Amen. God uses our singing and praise to do warfare against the enemy. The enemy doesn't want God's name to be lifted up. Amen. If he be lifted up, he'll draw all men close to him. God inhabits the praise of his people. The enemy doesn't want God to be close to us. He doesn't want God to win the battle for us. He doesn't want us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ that changes lives and gives hope. And as Sister Rachel says, that gives new management. I like how she said that. Gives new management. The old man doesn't reign anymore. The devil doesn't have a power over us. Amen. But there's new management. Christ has moved in. And the enemy doesn't like it. And so if he can get us distracted during song service, Maybe that vibration of your cell phone going off in your pocket. Maybe that desire to see what's going on in the world on your phone. Or maybe that person with little kids that are turned around. <laughs> Distracting. However it is. You know, anything. The enemy will take the slightest thing. And he'll use it as a distraction. Get us away from singing. Get us away from worship. But really singing brings us to a place of fighting a battle. Someone read 2 Chronicles 20, verse 21 and 22. If you just want to read it, I'll give you the words. Don't be worried about that. <clears throat> Singers. He appointed singers. Unto the Lord, that they should praise the 
the duty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments, A-M-B-U-S-H-M-E-N-T-S, ambushments, against the children of Haman, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were coming against Judah. And they were smitten. And they were smitten. Isn't it interesting the calling together of singers to be appointed that they should sing of the beauty of the holiness of God in the middle of battle. And as they sung praises to God, God put ambushments. God orchestrated everything that he was going to fight the battle. Isn't that interesting? Sometimes we just need to sing and to worship. That God fights the battle for us. I don't always, but yesterday and today, for whatever reason, um, uh, on my radio, I don't get a lot of radio stations around here. I don't listen to the radio an extreme amount, but I do get Caleb in my vehicle. And uh, I enjoyed yesterday morning and this morning just listening to Caleb on the way to work and the songs that were on there. Some of the songs were just amazing as it just brought worship. And even to the day, in the busyness of the day, um, I usually have help on Monday, but someone called off and I was on my own. So it makes for a long day when you don't get a lunch break and you're planning on a lunch break. And, you know, it's just, it's just a life. It's all good, but, you know, it changes the pace. You know, really, just to be able to have the presence of God, it really does fight the battle. And, you know, to be able to have a song in our heart, a song of victory, a song of worship. I love when folks, um, you know, share how that when they are going through something that God gave them a song. That song really can fight the battle for them. Because it's worship and praise to the beauty and the holiness of God. Amen. So, uh, our praise, singing, even singing fights our battles. Once again, you can be at home and you can be going through something. You don't need to beat Sandy Patty or Lionel Harris. I know they're old timers, but excuse me, I'm stuck back in the day. You know, a lot of those new people. And I don't want to give a lot of credit to these new people because some of them I, I'm just not big into that. But you know, you don't have to be someone with this amazing voice. You just have to be someone who sings praise to the beauty of God's holiness. And I believe God can set an ambushment and smite you in. Amen. Amen. So worship really does have a lot. Think about this. Um, some of our songs that we have, uh, if we look at our black culture, some of them were slaves. Maybe they weren't even treated the best. But some of those um, Negro spirituals, I mean, those people lived in victory even when they weren't in the best of situations because God fought for them. And even now, some of the songs we appreciate comes from that. Amen. God is faithful. And we think about... Um, you know, it is well with my soul. Horatio Spafford, as he wrote that, I mean, he's experiencing the loss of his children. But the way he got victory was that he, uh, he, he wrote at that very place where the ocean swallowed up his loved ones. He wrote when, uh, when sorrows like the sea billows roll. It is well, it is well with my soul. We think of, of, of individuals uh, like Fanny Crosby, who, who is blind, but even in her blindness, she writes visions of rapture and I burst on my sight. I mean, how powerful is that? Because God was fighting the battle. Do you think it was a struggle to be blind? I'm sure it was. 
I mean, we're not living in the hour in which we live where we have all these resources for folks who have handicaps. They weren't there. And so, but yet she, the, the battle was fought through that. Think about Joseph Scriven, who lost two people that he loved very dearly. But then he, then he wrote, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our, 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 our griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Do you know how they won? Because they sang. They worshiped. And I believe that when we look at the Word of God, singing is an act of worship, but singing is also a, a place where we know that God is fighting our battles. He is going to set up and He's going to smite our enemies. Another act of worship is playing instruments unto the Lord. God ordained music in His Word. Uh, to, to, to play an important part in, in worshiping Him. Oh, how He must love, He must love music. Someone read Psalms 149, verse number 3. Let them praise His name in the dance. Let them praise, or let them sing praises unto Him with the Amen. So the words are timbrel and harp. Amen. Let us praise His name. You know, some people may say, well, Brother Sue, I've been around Pentecost, and I notice when the music starts playing, or you can see people take off shouting and dancing. And so, is that bad? No. I believe because our victory is realized as we sing those songs, it is a dance, it is a worship a praise of knowing God gives us the victory. Amen. Does anyone have anything you want to say? I'm going to stop right there just because it's, it's about the time that I need to stop. Because it is the breakthrough. And sometimes, you know, uh, it's it's when we come together in church that, you know, there is that realization we're singing together. Uh, just seeing God warring for us. That That's important. Do you have something to say? Yeah, I think songs touch your emotions. Amen. And, and I know some folks don't, you know, some folks aren't emotional or
holding her grandfather's hand and family gathered in and just singing in the presence of God. It really was a real breakthrough with the presence of God and God helping. And uh, uh, just, uh, you know, very talented family as they were around there singing. Just the tears. It was it was that emotional time, but it was also a time of God's visitation, of breakthrough. Songs are amazing. They're important. It's worship. Praise God. The other thing, too, is I would say it comes right back to when we the reason we praise God before we start prayer and end prayer. And that is it gets our focus off of the current situation and gets our eyes focused on where they need to be in on God. And that changes our perspective as well because we're taken from what's going on, where we're stuck, what we're dealing with to our eyes to who we know has the answer and is fighting on our side. That's it. I'm singing my life, I'm singing 